You are being told to accept living in your parents' basement. You are being told to accept that you can only rent a basement suite or you can only rent a room in a place. The risk of government stupidity is at its highest here in 2024. So here in 2024, the thing that we all have to be aware of and cognizant of is government stupidity. I believe that this is the thing and this is the main risk in 2024. We don't know what what's gonna happen and what these different governments are gonna do. And I'm not just talking about Trudeau and Freeland and their stupid plans. I'm also talking about what's going on in the US right now because there's gonna be an election here in 2024. So that means data is gonna get manipulated. That means stocks are gonna get manipulated. You're gonna see all kinds of things happen. That's what happens in election year. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens, but I think there are really two scenarios there's three but two are likely pretty much that are gonna happen in response to the next crisis which will lead to high unemployment here in Canada we're already seeing the signs that the economy is heading into distress in fact it's already in distress as many of us know on this channel so we are aware of what's going on and we're able to make a plan to deal with that and I always say have a plan because preparation is everything and then you won't be living in fear and anxiety be prepared not scared so the thing is with what's going on here in 2024 these two scenarios one is that in response to the next crisis event they come out and they print money again and they basically run the same playbook that we saw in 2020 now that playbook that came out in 2020 is actually one that we've seen before in 2008 it's just this time it was very very, very extreme. Now, the thing is, it's hard to believe that even in that scenario, let's say they do widespread stimulus, it's hard to believe that you're going to see exactly the same thing happen because basically people have become clued up to what happened in 2021 and obviously in 2022, and they're now aware of that. Plus, I think the fact is when you look at inflation, I mean, so many people are living on the edge right now in Canada. We see all these surveys almost constantly that we know how much room do we have for more inflation because the fact is people are already cutting back massively on different things and those who aren't cutting back are just not cutting back because they're putting it on their credit card they're putting it on their line of credit and we know that doesn't end up in a good place with the banking system so I think could we see the same thing as 2020 yeah it's possible and I do think that response is one of the most likely actually when it comes to these two scenarios. I think it's more probable than the other one, especially with the current governments that we have in power this year in Canada. So basically the response to that, you're gonna see more deficit spending, you'll see more inflation, but you may not see asset prices rise like they did in 2020 and 2021. And assets that I'm talking about in particular here are real estate. Now why? It's because the bubble has burst in the real estate sector. So it's going to be very difficult for them to rescue that without going even beyond what they did in 2020. So they would have to double it, maybe triple it. And I don't think that that's a real likely scenario heading into 2024. In Canada, like I've said many times, when you bring the bubble back to land, it becomes irrefutable anymore. You have to call it a bubble. I mean, Canada has a massive amount of land, second largest amount of land in the world, only second to Russia. And essentially we have a housing bubble, which is in essence a land bubble. So when you think of it more as a land bubble instead of a housing bubble, that's when you realize that it's really a bubble. You are being told to accept living in your parents' basement. You are being told to accept that you can only rent a basement suite or you can only rent a room in a place whereas actually there was a time in Canada and in the United States where a young couple in their 30s could easily afford a nice single family home, which is what most people aspire to own in this country. And there should be no shortage of single family homes and there should be no high prices here in Canada. Because you think about it, we have just amazing amounts of land. We have like the most land per person. We don't have the problems that place 
places like Hong Kong have where they really do have limited amounts of land that they can build on. So when you think of this bubble more like a land bubble, it puts it more into perspective because as a land bubble, it becomes blaringly obvious to everybody that this can't continue because eventually what's going to happen is the amount of land that is available for sale and this land bubble that the housing bubble is based upon is going to start to implode. And that's already actually happened, believe it or not. So the land bubble actually burst slightly before the housing bubble, which has been bursting throughout 2022 and 2023. It was a couple of months ahead, but now nobody wants to buy land. Land is really not selling. There is a lot of available land for sale, but the prices are still high. I mean, think about it. Think about any city right now in Canada and all the land that surrounds it. I mean, the best example of this is actually the city I'm in right now, Calgary, because a lot of the areas that surround this city are becoming harder and harder for families to farm. And a lot of the farmland, they're looking to actually sell. A lot of the people are getting older. And again, younger folks, they don't want to do that type of work. Don't get me wrong. I think that's a bad thing, but that is the reality of what's happening. So there's a lot of available land and it's not like you're chopping down trees. There is loads of available land that looks exactly like these fields here, just barren with barely any trees, perfect for building houses on. So you would think that the housing prices here in Calgary would be rock bottom. You would think that land prices would be rock bottom, but no, you're actually wrong. And the thing is when you actually go and price a new construction home, that's when you realize that it's a land bubble as well, because they will actually price out the land and then the house that you're building on the land. But you think about what you're paying for that land. And in most cases, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, once again, nobody can give the supply argument when it comes to land. And that's what I like about it. So why are land prices so damn high then? What is going on here? And it comes down to a few factors. Again, speculation has driven prices high. What's happened is you've had oligarchs, big developers that have purchased significant amounts of land. One is Matami. And a great example of that is Matami. They did this in the greater Toronto area. They purchased loads and loads of land in the surrounding areas. And essentially they were speculating and they could afford to wait. But what that did was it took a lot of supply of land off the market and it obviously drove up the price for everything. I mean, you just saw that with the green belt thing that happened in Ontario, where people rushed in to speculate on the land. And then what happened? They had a rug pull on that one. But here's the thing. Back then, obviously these businesses were smart, but what they did was they drove up the cost of everything. And if you think about it, if you're a politician and you know that you're just going to put the accelerator to the floor for immigration and you're going to drive the population growth up massively unsustainably, then of course you're going to buy land as well and you're going to drive the price up of land. And that's exactly what we saw in 2020 and 2021. We saw a record amount of purchasing of land here in Canada going for inflated prices. But once again, guys, I bring it back to my initial argument, which is there's no lack of supply when it comes to land. So you can't make the argument that we just don't have enough supply of land. It all comes down to speculation. And eventually these bubbles implode because there's no greater fool to sell it to. Nobody can afford what's being built on the land. And then from there on, it all goes down. And when the land goes down in price, guess what? The homes go down in price and everything else follows. So land is a big portion of it. And it's not really talked about that much, but it's the best way that you can visualize this bubble. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this video here. You might like this playlist here. If you're looking for a VPN to get around Trudeau's censorship laws, go to expressvpn.com forward slash market mania. I'll see you in the next one.